I am joined with our great common sense conservative MP from King Vaughan, Anna Roberts. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. And we've gone through some housekeeping rules, uh, rules so please um, abide by those to make sure everyone has a question. But uh, over to you, Leader. Thank you very much to uh, Common Sense Conservative MP <laughs> Arpan Khanna. Uh, it's great to be with all of you here today and uh, to share our Common Sense plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. Uh, obviously, last night was a terrible, terrible night for That's Canadians. Right. Uh, after eight years of Trudeau, everything costs more, work doesn't pay, housing costs have doubled, crime, chaos, drugs and disorder That's are right. common in our streets. Uh, but we thought that there would be a small, um, a small ray of hope yeah. with members uniting against this terrible April 1st tax increase. Uh, Trudeau wants to hike the carbon tax by 23% on April 1st sure. as part of his plan to quadruple it all the way up to 61 cents a litre. Uh, Canadians cannot afford to pay more in taxes. Uh, and so we put forward a motion uh, asking for all parliamentarians to spike the hike until I can axe the tax. And unfortunately, the NDP, Bloc, and Liberals joined together in a carbon tax coalition to raise taxes on Canadians. But, so we lost the, the, the battle to, to spike, to, to, to spike Trudeau's policies have unleashed over the last eight years. Um, we're going to put parents back in charge of the, their children. We're going to stand up for parental rights. Parents and parents alone should be able to decide what they to teach their kids about That's sexuality right. and gender. Right. We are against radical gender ideology of Justin Trudeau. Amen. And um, we stand with parents who want safety, uh, who want drug-free communities. We're going to bring in more treatment and recovery for people addicted, not giving out free drugs yep. to addicts. Uh, we're going to repeal the censorship law, C-11 and uh, C-18, which has, uh, has shut down many of your businesses and favored the, the corporate and state-controlled media. We're going to ban all of my ministers from any involvement in the World Economic Forum. We're going to ban the IRGC terrorists mm -hmm. and, and kick out the 700 agents that are part of the IRGC and operating in Canada and uh, creating uh, chaos and abuse for our Persian and Jewish populations. Uh, we are going to uh, rebuild our military once again and, be, and, and fly our flag proudly uh, for, uh, because we are patriots. Uh, this is the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. The carbon tax is meant to be imposed, but it's not. If you were the Prime Minister, how would you have imposed the carbon tax? I would not have imposed the carbon tax. So that means uh, no carbon tax? That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next question is. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Uh, my question is: uh, What alternative strategies does your party propose for reducing carbon emission in Canada? And Thank you. Uh, how do they differ from uh, this current scenario? Yes, the. the we have the opposite plan of Justin Trudeau. He wants to make traditional energy, like oil and gas, more expensive. I want to make alternatives more affordable. So we will green light green projects. Uh, we will uh, give fast approval to, uh, to hydroelectric dams, nuclear power, uh, tidal wave power, uh, and carbon capture and storage so that we can supply clean, green, emissions-free electricity onto our grid that will power our, our industry and uh, serve our families. Um, we, will, in, we will prefer technology over taxes by incentivizing businesses to invest in technology to reduce their emissions uh, without imposing higher costs on families or entrepreneurs. Um, and we will export Canada's clean energy to the world. We have, for example, we could, we could uh, reduce global emissions by four times as much as Canada's total emissions in a year by exporting natural gas to India. India is planning to expand its grid using coal because they don't have enough gas. If we sent gas which is em emits half as much per unit of energy, then we, the effect of that would be to reduce global emissions by four times as much as all of the emissions in Canada in a single year. So rather than shutting down our industry and taxing our families, we should do the opposite. 
Abundant, affordable, clean Canadian energy is the way to displace and reduce emissions uh, and bring home powerful paychecks for our people at the same time. Welcome to Mr. Saga. Thank you. Uh, here for the air. Uh, I heard it this morning on 640 with Alex, excellent interview. Thank you. And uh, one of my questions, probably this question nobody will ask you, very seldom will hear that. But the fact is, uh, the fund, the Canadian funds, the Canadian patient funds, Canadian patient fund. Canadian patient fund, as is the biggest in the world, passing already half a trillion dollars. Meanwhile, the pensioners. Oh, pension funds. Pension, pension funds. funds yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, the pensioners, the maximum of maximum they can get monthly is one thousand three hundred dollars. Do you have anything in prospects for right. the future in relation to that? Look, it's a tough question. I, I uh, the, the Canada Pension Fund does have half a trillion dollars. You're right about yeah. that. Uh, that is a fact. We want the fund to remain as solid. So uh, we don't want politicians to pillage the fund in order to buy votes because that is the inheritance of every Canadian. Um, I, I think uh, the better way is to give. To, there are better ways to to make seniors better off, like by axing the tax lowering income tax so they keep more of their pension and retirement income uh, and um, by building more affordable homes so that seniors who rent uh, can afford the place they live. That, that's, that, that's my commitment to Canadian seniors right now. I, uh, and at this point in time, I'm not proposing any changes uh, to the Canada Pension Plan. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much uh, uh, for giving the opportunity. Uh, Boni Krumbi, uh, Ontario Liberal leader mm -hmm. uh, gave a statement that uh, if she will become uh, the Premier of Ontario, she will not introduce uh, the carbon tax in the province. What is your take on uh, our state? Well, li even provincial Liberals are flip flopping on the carbon tax now. Um, and Justin Trudeau is becoming an island, a lonely island, because even his Liberal leader in Ontario is saying she does not support his carbon tax plans. Um, my common sense plan is to axe the tax uh, to lower costs for Canadians. Trudeau wants to quadruple the tax all the way up to 61 cents a litre and that will be the deciding factor in the election. If you want to quadruple the carbon tax, vote for Trudeau or NDP. If you want to axe the tax, vote for Pierre Polyev. So, uh, many And they also feel many things happen in Canada, so more and more like their home country where they escape yes. from socialism and communism systems. And they're actually also afraid to express their views, uh, and they often be uh, worried about their business. So if you come So I'll go through them one at a time. Uh, Trudeau wants to decriminalize hard drugs. He's already done it. He partnered with Vancouver to decriminalize crack, heroin, and other hard drugs. He now yeah. wants to partner with Olivia Chow to do the same thing in Toronto. Uh, decriminalizing crack, heroin, and other hard drugs is a complete disaster. Uh, he also, he's giving out taxpayer-funded opioids, which uh, they call them safe injection sites. They're not safe. We saw a beautiful middle-aged mother killed by a stray bullet fired from a so-called safe injection site yeah. uh, about seven or eight months ago. Um, this is not safe at all. We don't need more tent cities, more drug use centers. What we need is to take all that money and put it into treatment and recovery to get people off drugs. I will ban hard drugs and I will enforce those bans. I will also stop the drugs from coming in at our border borders and our ports. Um, on. You say that a lot of your uh, people are worried that Canada is looking more like the country they came from. That's true. That's be that's not an accident. Trudeau said he admires China's basic ch communist dictatorship. He said he admires Fidel Castro. Um, he shares the same ideology as those regimes, and he's trying to impose it through censorship and other uh, top-down um, radical uh, agendas. My common sense plan is to support freedom. I'm going to repeal censorship. Uh, I will uh, close the um, foreign police stations that are on our soil. 
uh, mm -hmm. and um, we will protect our domestic population from foreign interference. Um, and then on parents' rights, we believe parents should decide what they teach their kids on gender and sexuality, not, uh, not government, uh, and not, uh, not school, not radical agendas in our schools. Well, we brought in the child benefit, so it's the, the Liberals opposed that. The um, the other thing is uh, we're not proposing to bring in new programs. We don't need more government programs. We need lower taxes and uh, less inflation. Um, Justin Trudeau has doubled the size of our national debt. He's spending more on every single program we have. And what are the results? What's better? We spent $89 billion on affordable housing. And what did it, what did it achieve? Doubled housing costs. He spends money on... Uh, drug and uh, crime programs, and what has it done? Crime's gone way up. You spend money on a child care program and there's fewer child care spaces. Um, <laughs> you know, everything he, uh, what's that? It's all photo ops. It's all photo ops. Yeah. You know, every time he spends money on something, it, it gets worse. Yeah. But we don't need more government programs. All the money gets gobbled up by bureaucracy. That's right. And that's what's driving the cost of everything. We need less bureaucracy, less government, more freedom and lower taxes. And that's what I'm going to bring. <clears throat> there is a secret RCMP report published recently which warns Canadians that they may revolt if they realize that how broke they are. And the situation yeah. is going to get worse in the next five years. If we link it with the present scenario of the market, yesterday Bell laid off another 400 people. Before Bell Media laid off 4,800 people, and every single industry is laying off the people. There is so much of manpower in the market. After these lays off, after the newcomers are here, the students are here, the work permits are here, how one will survive in this scenario? We don't think about next five years, how to survive in this inflation, with this new carbon tax, and with this market scenario. And maximum people in Canadian market, they don't have job now. They can't no. survive. They can't pay their mortgages. So any solution you have on that? It's a, it's a nightmare. People are living an absolute nightmare. Um, this is, I've never, I never imagined it could be like no. this. Uh, but you're right. Not only are people failing their mortgage payments, unable to feed their kids, they're now starting to lose their jobs. Um, and the, the next chapter uh, in the Justin Trudeau nightmare is unfolding with job losses. Um, so we need, a, we need a, a carbon tax election as quickly as possible so that we can defeat Trudeau, end this nightmare, and uh, bring home the Canada that we know and love based on common sense. Um, and I've, I've laid out my plans how we're going to turn this around. We have to get rid of the inflationary deficits to bring down interest rates. We need to start to produce our resources here in Canada to bring home the jobs. We need to um, lower the tax burden so the people bring home more of their paycheck. Uh, we need to clear the bureaucracy to build homes people can afford. So that's the, my common sense plan is very straightforward. Ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, and actually, we have seen that you made a big advancement uh, within the Canadian people and everybody began to feel that you, you should be the Prime Minister. And uh, on the other side, Justin Trudeau's government made a lot of uh, problems to the Canadians. However, my concern is not Canada right now. My concern is outside Canada. Okay. What happens from the uh, reports and that there are a lot of uh, foreign intervention in Canada. A lot of uh, countries uh, work and uh, what we have seen that works for the Liberal Party. China, uh, Iran and the Gulf, uh, some of the Gulf uh, countries. How, as an opposition leader, uh, can you impose uh, or y how can you protect the next elections? We just need it to be clean. We just need it for Canadians. How can you do this? Is it something under your control? We'll be watching very carefully. I know that you know the Ch Communist China intervened in the last two federal elections to help Justin Trudeau win. 
because he believed they would be he would be the best prime minister for Beijing. That's right. Um, we know that the Iranian government loves Justin Trudeau because he's kept the IRGC legal in Canada, so they can have their terrorist operatives you know, freely moving and uh, and using Canada as a playground. Um, we'll be uh, watching carefully for mass disruptions. I'm sure there will be foreign government, foreign interference again. Um, you know, foreign dictators would lo want to have a puppet as Canadian Prime Minister, and that's what they have. That's what they want to keep. And uh, that's why we will be watching for interference. We will be surveilling the election to make sure that Canadians and Canadians alone decide who the next Prime Minister is, because we're sure that they will vote f for common sense conservatives if they have a, a free election. So uh, in the last uh, two years, the federal government issued a huge number of student visas. Yeah. And without any due diligence, as a result, uh, you see the law and order situation. We, we feel that we are in a third world country, and people are so upset, and uh, what's going on around us is really questionable. What do you say about how you control that? Yeah, look, we, we had the best immigration system in the world before Justin Trudeau. He's destroyed it. He's yeah. totally ruined the immigration system. And uh, what I will do on international students, I will require every applicant prove they have income, housing, and admission letter to a real educational institution before they can get a permit to come into Canada. Uh, that will end the overcrowded basements, the fraud, the fake programs and the overpopulation in the um, place in, in and around uh, these communities. Second, uh, we'll ensure that temporary foreign workers are not abused, are not brought in by greedy corporations who just want to pay lower wages. Uh, we'll make sure that every time a Canadian is offered the job first. Um, so that we don't undermine wages for our own people with, uh, by greedy corporations bringing in lower wage employment for jobs that could be done by Canadians. Third, we'll link immigration numbers to the number of homes and the availability of health care so that um, we bring people in at a, a pace that, that, are, that, that we can absorb into homes and, if necessary, health care. Um, so that's my common sense approach to to bring back the best immigration system in the world. In relation to the topic you were speaking before, uh, so you told you will be implementing a uh, scanner system in the ports. For yes. Car but yes. My question is like, uh, I just want to bring an incident to you. Uh, you should do. The thing is like, one guy from your EDA came to Toronto, and his car was uh, trying to be stealed from him. So these type of incidents are making Crazy, Toronto yeah. uh, a place of like a, a car theft uh, capital of uh, Canada. So what steps other than the scanning system can you do to avoid this type of car theft in Canada? And the connection goes with that. <coughs> you, know, you were telling about like a carbon election this time, carbon tax election. So, when will you be finalizing all your candidates for the election? All right, so on the, uh, the Trudeau car theft crisis, um, as you know, Toronto has seen a 300% increase in car theft since Trudeau became Prime Minister, 100% increase in Montreal, um, 30, more than 33% nationwide. The numbers are not even out for last year. Those numbers I gave you are for 2022. Wow. So wait till the 2023 numbers come out. <laughs> Holy smokes. The Justice Minister got his car stolen Yeah, the Justice times. Minister. <laughs> three times. <laughs> three times. <laughs> three. <laughs> the Justice Minister who keeps letting the car thieves out. you think they would be grateful, but instead, how do they repay him? They steal his car. <laughs> three times. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's bonkers. But uh, so first of all, we have to put the car thieves in jail. Career car thieves will be ineligible for bail early parole or house arrest. They will stay behind bars. And sure. right now there's no consequence. They don't care if they get <coughs> caught because they know they're going to be right out the next day. Secondly, we're going to bring in scanners. They're low cost, high efficiency scanners that can look right through the container walls and see what's inside them. And that way you can just match what's in the, here's the manifest. It manifest says, uh, this is, um, you know, 
um, this is uh, flour for the from the for, for for a bakery. Well, and you look at the scanner and it says, "Oh no, it's a Beamer." Well, it's actually obviously a stolen car. Let's put the container aside, open the container, pull out the car, look at the That's VIN right. number, call the owner, say, "Hey, were you planning to send your car off to uh, the Middle East?" He'd probably say, "No, I wasn't. In fact, uh, I just noticed it's not in my driveway." Okay, well, we have it here at the Port of Montreal, and then they can find out who put the car in the in the container and arrest that guy. It's a pretty straightforward process. Um, finally, we need uh, a, a team of 75 CBSA car theft um, officers who will work at our four biggest ports. That's Montreal, Halifax, Vancouver, and Prince Rupert. And we're going to use, we're going to hire those 75 CBSA officials specifically t as a task force to crack down on car theft. Right now, there's only five CBSA officers at Port of Montreal for a half a million shipping containers. Insane. That's one for every 100,000 shipping containers. It's not Crazy. possible. Meanwhile, they're going to spending $165 million on management consultants, like the guys who gave us a Rive can. So we're going to cut the management consultants and put that money into frontline, boots on the ground, inspectors right. and scanners to stop the illegal export of our cars. The second question was on candidates, I believe. Oh, candidates. We're nominating them all the time. Great candidates across. Yeah, do you want to, you have some Absolutely, examples? yeah. We have a lot of great candidates. Even here in Mississauga, Sue McFadden, who is a uh, former city councillor. We have Ishak Mohammed in Mississauga. Um, across, right across Canada, we're having great response, great excitement. I think our big blue tent is growing. Um, you know, each some ridings, five or six names are popping up. So we're very, very excited about that. And we had Jamil Giovanni recently win a, a great by-election in Durham. Uh, historical numbers, so I think momentum is definitely on our side. And we look forward to showcasing and bringing some of our candidates out to engage with you in the coming uh, weeks as well. But uh, a lot of great excitement coming up. Thank you. Well, it's by uh, listening to people on the ground. I was just uh, at a union hall talking with HVAC uh, apprentices. Um, we're, uh, every day we go to shop floors and factories and uh, coffee shops to, to listen to, to the common people. Uh, and what they want is common sense. Uh, and that's what we're going to bring, that's a right. common sense plan uh, to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. These are the priorities of everyday common, uh, common sense Canadians, and that's what we're going to bring home. So my question is, since 2015, there are scenes of uh, that incident happened uh, in Queen's Black and Myanmar, while in the South Indian movies. Usually the scenes in South Indian movies only play in certain theater with higher prices of ticket. So how conservative party? What's going on with the cultural community on movie theaters? Okay. Uh, do you want to address that one? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been hearing about this concern quite a bit uh, from the South Indian community. Um, look, I think the criminal system needs to be uh, looked at across the board. I think if we have tougher penalties for those that are breaking the laws, I think it sends a strong deterring message to those criminals. So um, like our leader mentioned, you know, one of our priorities is to fix uh, so stop the crime. So we will be focusing on making sure that the criminal justice system reflects that, making sure that the penalties are there. We had minimum mandatory sentencing in the past, which were a strong deterrent. Um, so absolutely, and giving the police the tools they need to succeed as well. A lot of times the police officers tell us they go and arrest the person and five minutes later they're out on bail again. Um, so that goes across the board. And I think by having a system that is, 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 is enforcing the rule of the law, I think it will send a strong message to those that are creating this turf war within the community as well. And it, it's unacceptable because it is deterring a lot of business from happening in our communities. Um, so we are looking at that. I, I know our shadow minister is looking at it as well. It is of concern to us, but uh, it, it also funnels organized crime, which is a problem for us, right? So it all it, it's all connected, uh, but we will make sure we have a strong system in place that does crack down on those criminals uh, violating our communities at that level as well. That's a decision they'll have to make on themselves, but we'll definitely take a look at making sure we crack down on criminals that are causing concern in our communities, for sure.
and uh, on top of it, Canadians under the age of 30 have been ranked 58th on the list. Wow. Wow. Uh, Mr. Pongi, we have heard you saying quite a number of times that everything seems to be broken in our country, and which is correct to a very large extent. Mm -hmm. Be it immigration, be it health, be it housing, uh, you name it, and we have it. My one straight question to you is that when you become the Prime Minister, which are the areas that are going to be on your priority list? Because somewhere or the other, we all know that there are many challenges that are lying <coughs> ahead of you. And which are the main areas which are going to be on your priority list? And how many years do you think it is going to take to clean the chaos that has been That's made right. presently? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Uh, Look, I, I've never seen the country like this. It's just horrible in my lifetime. Have you yeah. ever seen it no. like this? No. I've never seen it no. so life so miserable for so many. Yeah. Um, I, as I, I, I know I'm being repetitious, but my priorities are to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. I think the, all those things would make people happier. If you axe the tax, people will be able to affo afford the nutritious foods they enjoy. If you... <coughs> If you fix the budget, we can bring down inflation and, and income tax so people feel like their hard work pays off. They're rewarded for doing good things. If we build the homes, then our young people can get married and have kids. What makes people happy? Having beautiful babies. But you can't have a baby if you have no place to raise the baby. That's right. That's, I, that's the number one reason why the birth rate is down. People say, what is it? Is it because of social media? Everybody's on the phone. They don't want to have kids anymore. It's because they don't have a house. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah. You have, if you live in a 400 uh, square foot apartment, or if you live in your mom's basement, you can't have kids. Yeah. So that's why the birth rate is dropping in Canada. And so if we build homes that our young people can afford, they can move out and start a, a life. Sure. Uh, and um, if you stop the crime, they can go out, take those beautiful children out to the playground without being afraid of stepping on a dirty needle or getting robbed on the way home. Uh, that, that's how we're going to bring home happiness. I, I think it, it's people's needs are very straightforward. They need sh affordable sh shelter. Basic needs, yeah. They need food. Yeah. And they need work that pays. The rest they'll take care of. Then they can raise beautiful families and be happy again. And that's what we want to bring home. So how many years do you think it is going to take? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Such a mess. We're going to get working on it right away. This Pierre has a plan, and you can trust when he says we're going to get hard at work. We're going to we're going to move to. immediately on yeah. taking our office. It That's is right. an incredible mess. Like it's it's like you know you come into a house and everything's been trashed. That's right. You know there's uh, uh, the place is graffitied and broken, and the pipes are leaking, and there's right. mold on the floor and and the windows are all smashed. That's the country we're going to inherit from Justin Trudeau. But we're going to put on our hard hats right. and our work boots and get uh, cracking to fix it immediately. Hi, Mr. Pierre. Uh, this is Rakesh Stewart from Hindi Times. <coughs> and uh, my quick, I will uh, start from reverse migration. Uh, if you go on the lake, you mention Canada, and there will be hundreds and thousands of stories that why one should not come to Canada, or how Canada is very bad for people. And a lot of people who are good, who want to be in Canada, there are a lot of people who are going back from here. And that is bringing bad reputation to, for, for Canada. People are advising. It's, it's, it's such a horrible situation uh, that only those people who are suffering, they know, and they might be knowing it too. Along with that, that uh, between India and Canada relation is at the lowest level. Uh, I'm allowed to ask you one question in this way, so I'll include as much as possible. So the next thing uh, I will ask, along with that, is your international rule with uh, uh, Canada's rule in Russia, you can work. Along with your international rule, what is happening in Gaza? <coughs> Look, on Canada-Ukraine, uh, we oppose the um, unjustified, unprovoked invasion by Russia. Our common sense plan to fight for freedom is the following. We support uh, giving the 83,000 CRV-7 missiles that, uh, that Trudeau wants to destroy. We have these missiles. We, we have no use for them in Canada. And we're going to have to pay $20 million to destroy them in Canada. Um, but the Ukrainians say they can use them. 
they will pick them up. They'll come to Canada and take the missiles away so we don't have to spend money destroying them. So let's give, let's do that. It saves money and helps them fight back. We're going to stop sending detonators and other equipment to Russia. Right now, Canada has exported de uh, detonators to the Russians, profiting um, the, uh, and also Canadian technology is being found in Russian drones. Yeah. So we need to stop exporting those things. And what we need to export instead is natural gas. That will be, right now we have a pro-Russia energy policy under Trudeau where we're blocking Canadians from developing natural gas liquefaction plants. We do not export any of our 1,300 trillion cubic feet of natural gas overseas. So Russia dominates the energy market in Europe, which funds the war. I'm going to be granting rapid permits to natural gas liquefaction plants so that both in the East Coast and the West, we can ship our gas to Europe and Asia, break Asian dependence on on coal and European dependence on Putin and turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. Now that's how we can defund Putin's energy monopoly. Middle East, um, look, we all want peace. We all want an end to the bloodshed. The bottom line is Hamas launched this war on October 6th. It was an unprovoked attack while there was a ceasefire in place. They violated the ceasefire to take, uh, undertake a merciless, diabolical attack on innocent civilians. They weren't even targeting military. They were targeting civilians deliberately. They have said that as soon as they, that the, the Israelis stop fighting, Hamas will regroup and attack again. So as long as Hamas is there, there will be no peace. So we call for Hamas to disarm, turn over the hostages, and unilaterally surrender so that we can rebuild Gaza and work towards a democratic and free Palestinian state next to a secure Jewish state of Israel. Thank you. Last question. Reverse immigration. I mean, as tr if I can use quote Trudeau, everything sucks in Canada. <laughs> That's what he said. He said. Did you see the video yep. of him saying it? Yep. Yep. He, he said was bored? his job was boring too. His though. job's sucks. boring as yeah. well. <laughs> but he said it sucks. He says the food prices suck, the housing prices suck, everything <laughs> sucks. So why would you? Are you? Are is anyone surprised that people are leaving the country when the prime minister thinks it sucks? <laughs> no. On that note, let's last make question. It, make it, let's make it unsuck so people <laughs> don't want to leave. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, good to see you always. Uh, you're telling me how it's all me in Canada. Good. Uh, good. And on the radio or TV, you're always there. Uh, I just have one question that has three different uh, sub questions, if that's okay. One so question, brother. One, one question. question. <laughs> <laughs> Very creative. Yeah. Yeah. Points for creativity. <laughs> three sub questions. One question with I'll three subs. I'll lose my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a very, very small question. How would you like to empower Canadians to become a prime minister after what we have gone through after the pandemic? With CBA loans, business are struggling, economy, inflation. What is that one thing you have in your mind, the magic thing that people want to listen to you and vote for a conservative to come into power and defeat liberals? What is that? That's number one. Number two, uh, what is the plan for you for small businesses in Canada that are the backbone of these industries? And thirdly, the ethnic media is still waiting to be acclaimed. We are always here to support yeah. whatever you know, we go yeah. over all the events and all the conferences and the media. That's right. But what we always feel that we get backlash from the from the federal governments. So I think it's about time that we need to all get new claims. Yeah. As well. So what is your What do you mean by acclaimed? Official media. And, and the mainstream media. The mainstream media. Yeah. The label side. No CBC funding. So what would, the, there's no magic. What I would say is for eight years we've had a government that says they're just going to, we're going to give you everything. Whatever you want, we'll give it to you. But the government doesn't have anything. Everything the government gets, it takes from the people. 
the government cannot give you anything without first taking it away. So I, I don't want to take away what you've earned. I want to let you keep what you've earned. I want small businesses to keep what they've earned. I want their workers to keep what they've earned. And help is the sunny side of control. And the government comes along and says, well, I'm going to give you this wonderful new program. Really? Who's paying for it? Are you paying for it, Mr. Trudeau? Did you open up your own bank account to create this? Pro oh, no, you're not paying for it. The people are paying for it. The same people you claim to be helping, they're paying for it. And my question to all these pe the people is, is has, has any of it been worth the, worth the cost of all these new programs? You see the cost through the inflation, the interest rates, the tax hikes. Are you getting back what's what, something that's worth more than what you're paying? Of course not. So when, uh, remember that every time the government promises to give you something. It's not them giving you it. They're taking it out of your pocket. And then they're taking a share for themselves. And then they're spending it on something that they've chosen for you. I want you to choose what you spend. I believe a dollar left in the pockets of the person who earned it is more powerful than a dollar in the hands of the politician who taxed it. So I don't want to run your life. I want to run a government that does a few things right rather than a lot of things poorly. That's the first thing. And then the, another example is the media. You may bring up the media. I, I'm here with you. I've done more of pre these press conferences than I, with you than I do with the media on Parliament Hill. Why? Because you're independent. That's, you're, this is actually a media. These are actual media here. Right. This is real media. What we have on Parliament Hill is basically a branch of government. They, they get their funding from government. They get their questions from government. Their, their content is regulated by government. It's not media. It's basically government. The press gallery on Parliament Hill is basically a, a, a PR outfit for the Prime Minister's office. And uh, that's why people don't trust them anymore. That's why their viewership is so small. I, uh, and I tell people, don't believe the, the press gallery on Parliament Hill. All they do is repeat government talking points. We need to support real media. And when our government does public um, information advertising, my government, we will ensure that independent media, like people here in this room, get the advertising. That's right. Because you actually have audiences, for one. Yeah. And two, um, your real media. Um, so that, that's my approach. I'm also not going to allow the press gallery to shut out other media from Parliament Hill. Why is it there's this club that gets to decide which journalists come onto Parliament Hill? They just say, so I want to get rid of that. Let people, let all media, so you want to send a, a correspondent to Parliament Hill, you should be able to do that. That's right. Sim with simply and easily. Um, and uh, that, that's the approach that I take. By the way, we're getting rid of all the censorship laws so that you have access. The C-18 has been devastating for independent media because you were shut off Facebook. Um, I, I'm going to get rid of that as well. And my question is that, like, what specific plans do you have for the hospital facilities uh, to improve and uh, you know, uh, uh, making more uh, uh, developed uh, hospitals nationwide? <coughs> The low-hanging fruit for health care is the 20,000 immigrant doctors and 32,000 immigrant nurses banned from working in our medical system today because they have no way of proving their qualifications. In the States, nurses can take, uh, Filipino nurses, for example, who go to America, they can take an exam. And if they pass it, they get to work in a month. It's an international exam. In Canada, they end up uh, taking a low-wage job because it's just too complicated to go through the steps. I, I met a technician over at an eye center, eye care center in Ottawa uh, about four months ago. He's a technician in Canada, but he's an eye surgeon in Dubai. So he flies from Canada to Dubai. He does two, three weeks of eye surgery. He comes back to Canada. He has to work as, an, as a technician. The only reason he doesn't leave is because his family is here. Well. But eyeballs are the same in UAE as they are in Ottawa, right? It's the same, we have the same, we're the same species, <laughs> right? And that country is even more advanced than we are. UAE, let's be honest, UAE yeah. is more advanced. So if they, he can meet their standards, why can't he meet ours? Well, the answer is it's too complicated. They say in, in Brampton today, if you have a heart attack, don't call 911, call an Uber, because the driver's probably a doctor. <laughs> so my, I have a common sense plan which is a blue seal 
testing standard. That's right. We have a red seal for the trades. Yeah. If you come to Canada as a mechanic or electrician, you take the red seal, you get a license. You can practice anywhere in Canada. We've had that for 70 years now. Why don't we bring in a blue seal for the professions? So Makes immigrant sense. doctors, nurses, and other professionals can take a test, prove they're qualified, and get to work. Uh, that would be the f fastest and simplest way to add more doctors to our system. Yeah, I'm from Equal Transparency Initiative. Uh, we have been hearing news about um, recently just uh, those companies that are trying to uh, make profit from the Canadian uh, So, we, listen, we want to deport all the IRGC people. If there, are, if there are crimes they've committed, then they have to be charged and tried. But if, they, if we don't have enough evidence to lay charges, I'd rather just get them out of the country. So, um, that, that's, uh, if you have evidence of crimes that they've committed, then you have to give them to the police as quickly as possible. Uh, otherwise, uh, the very least we can do is expel those who are not PR or citizen but are living here in our country on other permits. And at the same time, we need to criminalize the IRGC as quickly as possible. Many of them might have been charged already if, the, if IRGC were criminalized. But because it's legal, all the work they're doing to raise money, logistics, and other help for the IRGC is completely allowed in Canada. By criminalizing the IRGC, then we probably have an offense that they could be charged with and uh, convicted under. So that's why we say ban the IRGC now. Here. You agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. On that note, friends, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it means the world that to thank you here. Just one more question. We'll do it offline. We'll do it offline. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.